Good morning, world. Hello, everyone, everywhere. Pastor Robert Thibodeau here with uh, podcastforchrist.com coming to you with Prayer 2021, a year of prayer every single morning, 5 a.m. Eastern Time, live stream here on Facebook Live, also on YouTube Live. We're making a podcast out of this because we want to focus on prayer in 2021. And today is February 4, praise God. Let's go to the Lord with a word of prayer. We'll go ahead and get started with our, with our today's study in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that you lead, guide, and direct not just this short Bible study about prayer, but you lead, guide, and direct our footsteps all day long. Lead us by your Holy Spirit. Lord, have us cross paths with those you want us to minister to, even if it's nothing more than just a kind word. Lord, we just thank you that in these final days before Jesus comes back, we can concentrate on prayer, communication with you, teaching others how to, to come into a deeper relationship with you through Jesus Christ our Lord, all for the glory of God our Father, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God. Today's scripture of the day is from Acts chapter, one, verse five, or chapter 21, verse 5. They all join together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Hallelujah. Today we're going to be talking about group prayer. Yes, we talk about united prayer. Today we're talking about group prayer. You know, when I first started to attend basically full gospel services, I wasn't used to the idea of everyone in the building praying out loud, some in other tongues, some in English, all praying at the same time for about five minutes or more. That just, that just seemed weird to me. Right? I, wasn't brought, I was brought up as, in a Lutheran church. Uh, by my grandparents, and this, that that just did not seem like, well, that's not how we were taught to pray, right? And little did I know, that's, that's secular thinking, I guess you could say. Even when I was at Bible school, some ministers would come in and we would do this, and I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. I'm, I'm just being, Pastor Bob's just being honest here, but at least... I was willing to acknowledge that, you know, I didn't know anything. After all, that's why I'm at Bible school to learn, right? I, I understand I don't know everything there is about, you know, Jesus and the scriptures and God the Father and anything in general. That's why I was at the school. So when I took it in that concept, then I started to learn. I also understood that the true church, the true church, was meant to be fashioned after the first church, the book of Acts, the church in the book of Acts. You know, in the Bible, it's called the law of first mention. And if the church of Acts was the first church that the Holy Spirit set up after the ascension of Jesus and the day of Pentecost, well, then it, that must be how he wants it to operate despite man's best attempts to do otherwise. Amen? So I decided I was going to start to study this little aspect of prayer out for myself. I still didn't like it, but again, I was acknowledging that at least I didn't know everything. And if I was going to be participating in church service, I want to make sure it's a real church service and not some fake thing that, that man has put together with religious rites and rituals and all this stuff. I wanted to worship God, praise God. So I decided to study it out for myself. What I did, I found this verse, the one we just studied, along with other ones like it, uh, Acts 2, chapter 1, Acts 4, 24, Acts 16, 25, and many other. I mean, I just keep going on and on. And that showed me there was really power in the unity of, of prayer like what we're talking about. Praise God. I was I was starting to, to dip my toe into the pool. I was onto something here. And this these scriptures referred to basically in this quote, they lifted their voices. They lifted their voices. Plural, plural. This was not one man crying out loud and everybody else just praying there, yeah, uh, amen, being silent while one person's praying. Now, don't get me wrong. <clears throat> I love my one-on-one -on -one time with the Lord in my prayer time. I mean, I, I, mm, there is no closer intimacy that you can get to with God the Father than doing that. And, and you know, I tend to receive 
wisdom and inspiration uh, on matters that I lift to him in prayer in my private time. I mean, that's, that's just my communication with him. It's like, you know, walking in and say, you know, getting a cup of coffee and say, Dad, can I talk to you for a minute? And, and you lay out and, and the wisdom you receive in situations like that, in that intimate one-on-one -on -one time, it's priceless. And, and you can't just give up on that. But there are times when we need to be united in prayer and everyone, quote unquote, lifting their voices in one accord. Amen. Another example is when Paul and Silas were praying while in prison. And this scripture also references that they were praying out loud together at the same time. Amen. Oh, praise God. Don't shut me down when I'm preaching good. Hallelujah. So what happened when that when they did that? An earthquake hit that hit that place and, and opened every single door in that prison. But nobody ran away. That was unheard of back then and today. Bless God, right? But what else happened? The jailer's entire family was saved that night. And don't you know the reason that none of those prisoners escaped? Because all of them were born again too. Praise God. They didn't want to leave that prison because for the first time in their lives, or at least in a very long time, they were truly set free. Glory to God. They didn't want to escape that freedom. And further proof of that, Paul wrote a letter to the church of Philippians. This is the church in Philippi. This is where that church was at. This was the church the jailer founded with prison inmates. Glory to God. That's the church at Philippi. What else happened? I'll, well, I could go on and on, but I'm gonna, I'll get more into that aspect that just came to my mind tomorrow. But I want to zero in on one more thing as an example of the power of united prayer. Out loud, in front of everyone, and how God responds. The Bible says an earthquake occurred that resulted in the open doors to the prison, right? Okay. Did you ever notice there is no record in the Bible of an earthquake shaking anything else that night except the prison? Right where Paul and Silas were praying. How's that for answered prayer? Nobody except those who were praying receive that kind of answer to their prayers. I believe some of the prisoners hearing Paul and Silas talking and then singing and praising God out loud while still stuck in the stocks in the deepest, darkest, dankest part of the prison, I believe some of them joined in as well. And that group prayer is what brought God on the scene. I mean, if he did it for them, what does the Bible say? He'll do it for you. Praise God. God is not a respecter of persons, amen. What he did for one, he'll do for another. What he did for them, he'll do for you. Praise God. So yes, a united group prayer is important. It is effective. It does work. Hallelujah. But as with everything else, do not take this and make this into a doctrine of religious activity. Don't just say, well, okay, this is the time in the prayer service where or this is the time in our church service today where we're just going to take five minutes and let everybody praise God for five minutes out loud. Come on, just, just start praying. No, no, that's a planned ritual. And, I mean, I'm not saying God doesn't honor that, but folks, your, your church building is not going to shake. Not when it's part of the ritualistic services that you, as a man, want to institute because... This is what happened before, you know, before God answered my prayer when I was standing in the bathtub on one leg uh, trying to hang up that curtain, uh, shower curtain, and God talked to me right there. So uh, from this point forward, this church is going to stand on your chair on one leg and reach up towards the ceiling like this, and we're just going to start praying out loud for God to answer our prayers. No, 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 a thousand times no. When prayers like this are offered up, it should be spontaneous. It should be something like, you know, the pastor's up there preaching and the audience is, you know, they're getting into it and they're shouting, yes, amen, glory to God. And, and suddenly people are starting to speak tongues here and over here and people are, and, and all of a sudden the pastor says, you know what? Let's just take five minutes and praise God. Hallelujah. And then the whole place just breaks out into prayer. That's the type of service I'm talking about. 
but not where you say, you know, you sing your 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 one song, welcome, you know, go around, shake everybody's hands. I hate that part. Yeah, shake everybody's hands. Oh yeah, give the little Christian hug. You guys are oh I love you so much. Yes I do. I missed you. I haven't talked to you since last Sunday. Well if you love them that much, why didn't you call them during the week? Anyway, uh, then they get in, they get another song, and then they take the offer, and then they get another song. And then they'll come out and, okay, well, this is the time when we're going to praise God for five minutes. So let's get to, yeah. don't waste your time. Don't waste my time. Glory to God. Well, that's long enough. We've talked long enough today. You get the idea that, that group prayer works, but not when you make it into a ritual. Praise God. Amen. So let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray together right now. Praise God that you are the God of the universe. You are the creator of all things. You are the one who planned this day before the world began. You are the one who has crossed our paths together through the power of the internet, praise God. You are the one that we look to for deliverance in troubling times like this. And Father, we thank you for loving us so much that you established the pathway through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, whose we are, whom we serve. And Jesus, we thank you for doing this for us, for coming into our heart and creating us this new man, one that loves God, one that loves you. Praise God. And we thank you, Jesus, that we serve the Most High God through loving you. And to you, Father, we give honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And amen. Glory to God. Do me a favor. Leave a, a comment down below. And I ask you, please, go over to iTunes.com. Look up Prayer 2021. Leave us a comment. Leave us a review. Leave us a five-star rating. This is what helps us grow and be identified on the search engines and just to impact more people with the Word of God each and every day in 2021 as we come to you live through the power of the internet on Facebook Live, on YouTube Live, on the podcast. We just want to reach more people, teaching them how to come to the Father in a deeper relationship through prayer. Praise God. Now, be sure to visit our website, podcastsforchrist.com. Download our free resource right there, How to Start a Christian Podcast. Hallelujah, it's free, and it'll bless you immensely. If you have a podcast or you're thinking of starting a podcast, this resource guide will help you to do so, to grow it, possibly to monetize it. It's a great resource, and we are blessed to be able to bring you this program because of podcaststhroughchrist.com. All right, folks, until uh, next time, this is Pastor Bob Tibble to remind you from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 in the Living Bible, our base scripture for the entire year. Always keep on praying. Be blessed in all that you do.